You know, there's just something special about saying this. Demu on the roost. Every time I get into a Demu game, my brain immediately thinks one thing. Will there be horse archers? There's got to be, right? I can't think of someone that loves horse archers more. I have to find out, though, because it's going to be a matchup up against the Byzantines being manned by none other than OPA, a.k.a. Wham. First of his name. We are going to be on Rocky River all maps. And I'm curious, actually, like no double scout opener from Wham at all. That's interesting, but I think that's something specific to Rocky River, right? It's like Rocky River actually doesn't have as many deer, if I'm not mistaken, because you get the, the free stack deers, right? So you're actually, wait, no, you have more, right? Because you get 14 and then you get eight of those free stacks. Oh yeah, you definitely have more. You have, isn't that 38? So there's 38 deer here. Yeah, so I'm a little bit surprised, actually, that there wasn't a second scout opener. I guess the full process for Wham is he knows where most of the deer are going to be. So he just runs out into the center and snipes all the bulk load and then goes back for his safety net, right? That's pretty smart, actually, because it means you're not sacrificing villager production, but you're still essentially blocking out almost half of the deer on the map. It looks like Demu is going to be able to sneak in for one. So in the end, he got, what, out of this um, 15... 22? He'll get 22. So not too bad. 220, and then he just needs to find a wolf. Except, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Rocky River doesn't spawn many wolves, right? I'm trying to remember if Rocky River actually spawned any wolves. It's really confusing because in competitive play, we uh, have an alternative map. Yeah, it spawns zero wolves. That's right. Because I think in competitive, it's Rocky Canyon does, right? I think Rocky Canyon does, and then Dry River doesn't. But because for some reason we didn't just want to use Rocky River, it gets confusing. So it looks like Dumu is going to be shy of the TT bounty. However, the good news is between the hunting cabin he opened up with, plus the amount of bounty he got, he's able to afford a wheelbarrow as well as a tech up. That's the, the goal. That is your big priority when you play the Sith. That's what gives you really clean, really quick executions on your tech ups. I love this from Wham. Identifying you didn't need that second scout, has meant he had that extra villager gathering this whole time with the system effect. Means yeah. he's already building into the Grand Winery. And by the looks of it, we are going into some multi-TC play for the Byzantines. Yeah, I'm really liking this build actually from Wham. I think it's a, a very smart approach. We've been seeing a lot of civs kind of experiment the idea of like 2TC to answer the roost. We did watch a, a competitive game between Kiljardi and Faye a few days ago where Faye was playing the Byzantines. In that game, she got kind of cheesed out of her timing. She basically got outpost rushed and it kept denying her TC timing. I don't expect to see that here. It's way too long of a distance. And also, Demu doesn't really strike me as a type of player who will engage in those type of frivolous outpost shenanigans. Instead, it's going to go for a Kremlin drop on the left side gold. Um, this is going to be long-term wood access. One problem I do see, though, is you're going to have to move your wood down here. Otherwise, you'll be very inefficient. So I wouldn't be surprised if Dimu moves out of the stone first, gathers what he needs, and then comes back across the wood afterwards. That way, he doesn't have to drag his eco back and forth because you don't want to be going on this tree line without the 20% wood influence increase. One nice thing about this Kremlin, remember the influence works on not just lumber camps, but town centers as well. So these straggler trees, if there's anything left of them, will give over extra wood. How did you guys vote in the end? 300 for Dumu and 9k for Wham? Wow. I guess I know where all the Dumu fans are. <laughs> Alright, so the question is do we get a 2TC or 3TC game? Dumu, win condition for him should be, I'd say, about like early castle, maybe? Because if you build it, if you scale into knights, it's not bad against Varangians, right? Is my thought process here. For Wham, if it's not going to be knights, Varangian just hit really hard. Um, and then if you go into Western Contract, I really do quite like Western Contract in this matchup. Javelins aren't too bad because they actually have some relevance against Streltsy later on the game. But it doesn't give you as much population efficiency if you get an hour deep into a game. So if Wham thinks that this is going to be an Imperial Plus game, I think he's served a lot better by going Western Contract and going Foreign Engineering Company. But if he wants this game over by like early Imperial at the latest, we might see him go towards Silk Road 
and a Varangian spammy build that potentially ends in Palatine School. Dimmer, on the other hand, if this is going to be just 2 TC, I think there's going to be more, right? No. Okay, he did pull the villagers back. So if it's just 2 TC, with the way that Wham spread it, I'm not expecting like Fast Castle into Horse Archers. But Fast Castle into Relic Gathering makes a lot of sense here. Considering that with this type of format, I don't feel like the Byzantines want to hang around in field too long when they go 2 TC. Their power spike is going to be cast with this um, aforementioned Kavarangian, as well as the fact that the Grand Winery will allow them to pick up relics. That is a very wide second TC from Dimu. I like it though. You can't contest this. You only have one scout. This is one of the layers to the cake, and there are many layers to this cake and why Roost is so good. We often talk about the fact you can't hide details from them due to the scouts. We talk about the fact that they force a reaction because of the bounty system. We talk about the fact that because they have so many scouts, if you try to go for a loose TC, they can grief you, right? They can just keep walking different scouts in to block the drop. There's so many frustrating points about the Roost opening play that make them such an absurd sieve. It's kind of crazy as well, because I think if it wasn't for what they can do in the first five minutes, this sieve wouldn't really be that ban worthy and competitive. It still has some strong potential arcs, but it wouldn't be out of control like it currently is. That's why I'm curious. One's in chat if you believe in Dumu, two's if you believe in Wham now, how you see this is going. Because we're definitely going to court towards Castle Age. It is going to be a race. I don't expect either player to really build a single unit until they're in Castle. Dumu might add in a stables. That might be the exception, right? Um, he's definitely going for something with this amount of wood. The question mark is what? That's also interesting to me. He chose to build the double lumber camp to connect into his primary wood line instead of just moving out the south one. In fairness, it's less walk distance, right? And is he going gradual second T uh, third TC, rather? That's what I was wondering with the amount of wood he's got, but like, it, it feels a bit overkill here, right? Maybe you want Arislet somewhere? Okay, there you go. That makes sense. He wants Arislet. He's going for the ball. So better gathering rates. You need this to contest the Byzantines at this stage. Level 2 Cistern, the gathering rate increase across all their economy kind of mirrors out against what you're getting as the Rus at this stage. Once they're at level 3 Cistern, they pull ahead. So you need the better gathering rates to contest. Wham. Well, not going to be able to yoink this away. Almost gets pinched on his scout as well. As we were saying, because he's gathering the stone, we should be looking at Iris Meanwhile, Wham has gone for the jabs. Jabs are pretty nice here to try and just raid. Akratoi activation almost does at least get rid of the scout, but not able to. And this, this is, just, once again, what annoys me is the fact that the Roost were able to make this play on the opposite side of the map with no real cost loss to them while still keeping info on what you're doing at home. Right? It's just such a powerful element, that high-level AoE 4. I imagine you know, there's probably plenty of us that just play a chill game here or there. We're like, I don't really get why Roos are that, that big of a deal. I don't feel like they're that powerful. At the highest level of play, information in RTSs in general is everything. And there is not a single sieve in the game that can garner more information in the first 10 minutes than the Roos. We are getting those olive grows quite early now from Worm. Second group of jabs is on the way. I'm expecting this to just be a play into Knights. This is not the type of game I would anticipate Horse Archers in because you are up against Javelins, right? And that's something that should have been scouted by now by Doom. I'll be surprised if he doesn't know about them. So realistically, you're probably just looking at standard Knight Spam with a gradual play into Boy's Fortitude. Possibly you come back to Horse Archers if your opponent spreads a bit wide, but that's several minutes away. You can't rush into that comp. High trade house now on the way. Huh. Interesting. Would he have not got more wood around this side? I think he would have, but he's paranoid about the javs, right? Is the If the javelins are on the way and they scout you here, you'll die. You're too far away from the TC. This is at least close enough for a gremlin pool and further away from the enemy. Okay, ignore me. He's going arch. He's actually doing it. D who am I kidding? I said he loves his horse archers at the start. I should have had faith in, in my belief here. Doing this against Javs is pretty bold, but when you think about it, like your gout close is quick, you have high base damage. You're a glass cannon, but actually, funnily enough, so are these Javs in that matchup. You know, once you get veterancy, you're better off from a health and damage perspective. Um, but you're very limited in how many Javs you can get, right? Especially even more so when you consider Wham is playing on Deer. 
As Faye pointed out to us earlier, the Pro Scout's Byzantine build for her didn't work. Um, these don't give olive oil. <laughs> Freaking love this. It's such a Dumu move. I'm curious. Wow, he must know though, right? Like, this is not a player that rarely does horse archers. I think you could combine the roost games of the next 10 players in the top 10. Top 11 in that case, I guess. Top 12, actually, because he's got first and second, right? And they would, between them, have less horse archer games than Dimu does in the last few months. Now, one thing that is scary about the comp that Wham's chosen, we mentioned he probably doesn't want to go into, like, Imperial Plus anyway. But by going for the Silk Road, you guarantee that that, that isn't an option. It would feel really rough to try and play this too long. Um, the other issue I see is you don't even have your recovery arc of Foreign Engineering Company with Javs. It sucks. It's nice to get precision training for plus three damage, but the negative element of that is with the Foreign Engineering Company, if we reach that late in the game, you can't play into Nest of Ease because you'll get countered by the superior range springles of the Roost, right? So to me, this is now about how does Wham win the game in Castle Age? Whereas Dumu is like, how do I actually ensure we get to Imperial? Horse Archers is a cool way of addressing this because he'll get enough together to just go raid Eco and then eventually converge on the main fight. Because if you start idling out economy, Wham won't be able to get enough javelins together. Probably one, of course, it's going to be this Relic's first one already home. Great intercept as well, just blocking out the easy Relic's. You notice that actually Wham was intending to go for the more ambitious ones first. Should have a big enough army to guard this one. But the north side ones are not going to be up for negotiation. I love the way that Dimu's playing onto pocket resources as well. He understands that Wham's army is immobile. Even the layer you add in in Castle Age. Like, I think if I had to highlight one kind of weak point of the Byzantines, and I'm hesitant to do so because of how powerful the Castle Age is, it's the lack of mobility in the comps. You always play infantry, right? If you notice that about Byzantines, if it's not Hippodrome, it's never cavalry. And Cataphracts just aren't really affordable even with Hippodrome. The only reason you have Cav at that point is because you went Horseman. It's so like the negative, the weakness of Byzantines is playing a wide map. That's why I really like Dumu's combo. He can choose where the fights happen. Wham can't. Or such as... Ooh, 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 oh. oh, just in time. I thought he was going to be a bit too late there. But now... With the scouts, he could break through. The problem is, he's probably going to have to come home to address this. He got caught on the pocket. Well played. Boys Fortitude now in the way. This is going to be the point where Dumu looks at the fight. This is a huge power spike in this matchup. These Javs do 18 damage. They have 5 damage reduced. All Sarches are doing 13 damage in this situation, but they're about to get an extra 20 health. It balances it out to the point where when you have like 20, 22 of these Horse Archers, it's not so unrealistic to imagine a fight win against javelins. Now it's going to be continued dodge death. <laughs> okay, please take the berries. He is as well. That's brilliant. This is really cool because while the berries aren't great for Demu, they're fantastic for Wham. So you're taking away something he wants. And you know, here's something crazy. I said like Imperial Age seems kind of sucky for the Byzantines, right? Look at what Wham's doing with his economy. At first, I thought he just didn't know what he wanted to build. This is looking more and more like him. Jabs. <laughs> Trading out. Actually, just dealing with the scout straight away. But you see what I mean with the damage increase. Once his Limitane are gone, Dimu can just chase this down. And there's no way Jabs can retreat quick enough. Looks like Limitane did find the villagers. So that's going to be a shift away again. Not the worst case scenario to be forced away here now that you've got the hunting cabin up, right? Let's go and generate some gold. Uh, by the way, did you guys get your numbers in for the high trade house? I didn't see any in chat, so time to fix that. Farm transition should be coming soon for Dimu. I think he realizes that playing these pocket resources is difficult to do now, so he needs to prep for his transition. He's holding a thousand wood in reserve. It's usually a surefire sign that someone's pivoting. Or such a number. Like, it's such a Dimu thing, man. You know how some players just make something their own, right? Like, it's almost like a signature strat for them. This is Dimu's to this day. Always puts a smile on my face. The Pew Pew Ponies. All right, let's have a look. Drum roll, 125. Looks like no one got bingo on this one. Yeah, it's 
not too bad, right? It's a relic and a half. And on top of that, you're spawning deer that prolongs the time required before you go for farm transition. I think this is another element of why High Trade House became meta, is because the gold, like, access, like, you can still get your hands on relics at a reasonable timing, right? You're still going to field units. But the thing that I find usually made the games harder for Roost in Castle Age was the farm transition. This not only guarantees you get the bounty levels as the game goes on, the more important part is that every minute you're spawning yourself 350 food. It saves you from just needing to rush with 2,000 wood into farms. And no, no, not pew pew horses, Julie Beck. These are pew pew ponies. I coined that name about two years ago. Actually, it might have been longer. Love me some pew pew ponies. Got two drop shields on the way now. Pretty good here with the spearman. Actually, this is kind of crazy, guys. <laughs> so, horse archers have a really long wind up to attack. Teardrop shields, you drop the shield wall and you run. Look at the movement speed. That's 1.44 without charging. If you're in range to charge, you can actually gap close cavalry. Really smart play. Problem is, we are now seeing spearmen coming out, right? So, there's a body blocker. And because you went jabs, you actually don't have a great counter to spears. Men at Arms also getting added in now. That is quite interesting here. It looks like Wham did actually read it ahead of time, though, because he's got crossbows on the way. I think actually Wham's more paranoid about knights than he is about uh, Men at Arms because he saw Boys Fortitude, right? And the most logical transition, like the optimal way now to play Roost is to go knights on top of this. We can see that Dumu isn't hanging around, though. We questioned whether Wham wanted to play Long Castle. I think it benefits him. Dumu wants out as cleanly as possible. Raid on the flanks again. Wood Fortress is going to get garrisoned, but if you shield wall up here, you potentially... Okay, ignore that. Spirals coming in. You're not getting through that off first at all. Wow. Game's looking pretty good for him at this stage from the farming perspective. Dumu's only now adding those in. He's at 18. Meanwhile, wham, with his better farms, are up at 39. He's also got level system 5. So, this point in the game, I think the best move for wham is you need to try and force a direct fight. The weird part is now with this keep dropping the gold, I'm starting to get the feeling he wants Imperial. That to me feels a bit funky. In fairness, his army is more value on upgrade, right? Like the Limitane, the Javelins, these are all things you want to use. Dumu, there's a giant question mark in my mind on whether you actually get anything worthwhile out of playing Horse Archers into Imperial. If you can raid, great, but if you need to take a fight... My silence should say everything. Kind of impressive the numbers you can get with Byzantines on farms, right? This was before level 2 ecotech. It's basically 2k food with, what, 44 villagers? Bloody powerful surf. What I like about the Imperial Age potentially for the Byzantines... Okay, it's going to be foreign engineering company. I was about to say is the idea of like Unlimitane and Varangian spam. Supported by the jabs that take out Streltsy. This to me is a bit weird in the potentially it works because your opponent isn't imped up yet and he's playing Cav. But the moment we grind this into a late Imperial game, Foreign Engineering Company feels worse than Palatine School to me. I agree with the idea now because of what Doom is built. But if you can't turn this into a snowball quickly in a win, that's when I start to favor the Roost in Imperial. Wham. Marching out. Good posturing. Just make sure the walls can't be breached because these walls go down, the horse archers run past, right? And they just hunt eco. It's like the best case scenario because realistically, when we tech up, Dumu shouldn't really want horse archers anymore. It's not even long-term scalable because this map doesn't have a great amount of wood. You have two big fire, two big wood clusters rather, and then a bunch of baby ones, right? My armory now in the way. The Varangian raid has been scouted out. Horse archers quick to react to it. And what is the desirable comp now? I think for Wham, it's going to be Massing Javelins and then probably Varangian works quite well here for one or two bumps. Then when you see it Streltsy, I kind of favor Limitane because then you just need an efficient front line. And the reality is that like Varangian with their six ranged armor are going to reduce less damage from Streltsy than 
the Limitane with a 30% reduction on shield point, right? So it's just a better unit. And it's more cost efficient, right? You're spending 130 resources on one, or you're spending 90 resources. And the 90 resources resource is more reliable. Seems like Wam agrees. Limitane upgrade is on the way. Has queued up additional ranking as well, though. All such as, of course. When you're this many in, you might as well get the elite status. I imagine Gallop should be on the way too. Last time I checked, Gallop is still bugged, though. The way it's bugged is, from what I can tell, you don't get the extra range when you activate Gallop. I don't know if they ever fixed that. Love the camel riders here, by the way. <laughs> Considering half of Dimu's army is Cav. Cav that doesn't get bonus damage, it's just base damage. Camels are best against base damage only units. So, yeah, heavy reduction incoming when they get in range. Camels moving in. Spinning as well. And remember, this is also giving the armor across. Getting the plus two from that. That's huge here. Means these Limitane, the way it works, Shield Wall, you reduce the damage by 30% and then you reduce the damage by ranged armor. So these elite archers are not hitting that hard. Starts to back up a bit. Demu. Now begins to hunt. Wave's going to split a little bit. It looks like we actually do have Gallop activated, but, or rather research, but not activated. Yeah, a little bit surprised by... Wait, no. What? UI? Question mark? That's a bit... We oh, dude, okay, that's quite comedial. Remember, foreign engineering company unlocks all, all the unique texts, <laughs> so it shows that you've got Gallop if you're clicked on the Byzantines. It's like they didn't care about it, though. The army tactics on the way instead. Dimu starting to feel the pressure because the cannon has come out from Wham. <laughs> this armor's actually kind of bonkers. He's winning these fights, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's insane because he keeps the camels alive. The men at arms are at least going to push this back a little bit. And you expect that, right? It's production device. Wham has slowed down. It looks like he's getting ready for a transition. Or rather, the next wave. Elite army tactics on the way. Another kind of insane thing with the Byzantines is just how quickly they get these techs. Javelins are going to be fine. They'll be able to stand their ground. He needs to keep at least one of these camels alive. It's really important he does so. Because once the Vrangan get here, look at their armor! <laughs> they have eight melee armor with no blacksmith upgrades. That's wild. Yeah, don't get baited by the Grenadiers. That's going to be Golden Horn Tower 100%. You know how I know? Because Wham, I don't know if you guys know this about him, but he likes winning. Boom. If you put your camels in a ram, does the buff still provide? I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I think they fixed that quite a long time ago. SMB's now coming out, though. Spearman need to move around the back here, but they're not going to be quick enough. Rangan here would intercept. I'm worried that we now have an issue here. Dimu has not prepped anti-siege. Spearmen are not a quick answer. And now oh, this Royal Cannon is actually a bigger answer than the siege on the other side. Starting to get Streltsy added in, but the Nestabees really are going to be the counter, so Dumu needs to retreat away from this. Wham now has a significant eco lead 128 to 100. Dumu has at least been forced away from horse archers to a degree. Looks like he's going to keep some of them alive and they can raid, but this is no longer your winning comp for a fight. You need to be under mass Streltsy, but the thing that scares me more is you need to solve for the Nestabees. That's why Spring's on the way. Remember, he did go high armory, so actually he's favored here. Banded arms means that realistically, if this turns into a siege game, Dumu should never lose. And if you recall, this is the point in the game I said that I was worried about for Wham. I hate this stage in the game for Foreign Engineering Company. You lose all value out of it directly, and it falls back to the Javelins and the Camels. Remember, the Javelins, they get plus three damage from precision training, and the Camels give the aura. Which is pretty cool, but the problem in this matchup is that you are fighting into a sieve that builds high base damage units, the Streltsy. So the idea of actually getting plus two armor isn't substantial. It's not that important. Love this raid coming in on the backside though. Berserking has got the extra movement speed tech in. So extra eco damage being done to Dumu's backside of this. Also denying him on the gold. 
And actually, like, gold access-wise, he's got 1.6k close by. The rest is a little bit spread wide and exposed. And that's pretty nice for Wham. He just scouted that this transition is coming into Siege. So this is where he needs to change his script. And I think it is just going to be mass Varangian with Javs. I really like that. Javelins are decent answer to Streltsy. Just look at the damage at this stage of the game. They hit for 31 damage into the Streltsy. And they have extra range, remember. The Streltsy, they didn't go to their local opticians. They haven't got glasses. They only have four tower range. So you can actually kite them quite effectively. Mango's still going to be a problem, sure. But with some staggered line formation, you can start to whittle away at these numbers. Hmm. I'm wondering, do we see trade in this game? The way that walls are being set up by Wham, I wouldn't be surprised if he's heading towards that. Interesting with the Siege Workshop drops, though. So it looks like we might get some sneaky Karis Siphons players here. All right, last of the horse archers dead. We can get into some real gameplay. We're done with the memes. Ambitious on the berserk. It's gonna go for it anyway. Good lord. I mean, you should be able to get all the siege here. Yep. No escaping from that. <laughs> so fast. 1.46 movement speed. He did whoopsie there and leave a little bit of siege left over. Somehow still gets the manga. Like, dude, these units are insane. Remember, they hit for 28 damage at this stage, and that's only because he hasn't been getting the melee attacks. They can hit for 30 damage per strike, with an attack speed that's almost once every second. It's insane just how good Varangian can be. Back on that gold again. So Dimu actually has critical mass, he just needs to fight now. What's interesting to me is this idea of sending Varangian in to clear the siege, while the Nestabi is Hail Mary, right? That's exactly what Wham seems to be going for here. He wants to go up to four nest of bees. He's got 40 plus for Angian. The Spruill count is only at two for Dumu. I think that's way too low. <laughs> Dumu should consider a wall. Um, he has got walls. He's got Palisades. The problem is you're playing Roos in Imperial Age without Spaskaya. You can't actually wall. I think that's a big disadvantage on this map, by the way. On this map specifically, because Rocky Canyon often becomes about stonewalling. You can't do it. Nestabee's moving up. Camera string only now on the way for Dimu. Kara siphons. Come on, guy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why are they not getting bonus damage? I'm burning something that's made of wood. Can we just can we just agree that that's absurd? My immersion's ruined. I think that Kara siphons, if like um if another ram or let's say, like a siege weapon walks through the fire, you should just hear screaming and they should be on fire constantly. The little burning effect you get when a building's almost dead. All right, enough of my dumb ideas. Let's focus on the fight coming. Spring count now up to four. This is looking a lot better for Dimu. This is what I want from him. He needs to be careful about these flanks still. They are a problem. Wait. <laughs> The Firecracker Man has arrived. Wait, is he actually microing it or is that just random behavior? Because I feel like he's splitting the damage. It's almost like watching someone clear a creep camp in Dota 2. Where you don't kill everything one by one, you target him down with your AOE damage. Granite is actually doing some important work there. And the Varangian full up as well. The gold has at least been taken, but now Dimu going down to 90 economy. Yeah, he needs to dive in. He needs to kill. He's losing so much at home right now. Holy crap. Farm's getting out of up. Village is getting killed left, right, and center. And at home, Nest of Ease. She'd be able to hold this back low enough. Sprills are now in range, so Siege is getting cleared up. Dumu needs to trade. He needs to find eco kills. Luckily for him, the Manganel Tower is not going to be there on the front side, so not great coming through there. Frangian were trickling into their death. That's going to be reset. The damage at the back here. I mean, there's still no strong defenses to really hold this. The Kremlin alone against this many Varangian is going to tickle. <laughs> How is this Grenadier still alive? I feel like I just want to watch his story. He's on a journey. It, the journey is called Select All Army. Oh my god, he has actually selected All Army. What? Alright, not going to lie, that's a bit cursed. 
It's kind of like that time where you want to have a bomb that exempts certain military from selective army, right? Demu. He's got the aura. I don't think leading with the camels is the way to keep the aura, though. Berserk gets activated. He's heading on in. <laughs> he wants it all, and he wants it now. I think that possibly was too long of a wait on an A-click. I mean, the Streltsy count has barely been tickled. That was a lot of ranking deaths. Nest of E count, at least is scaling up. He can get some tickles in here. If he uses the tree line, I actually think that he can completely wipe Demu stack. It's just all about positioning here. If the Sprues can't see, they can't kill. <laughs> Car Honestly, at this point, I just send the Car Siphons into the enemy base. It's the best thing you can do, but once again, select all armies cursed. Frank in, hunting in on the Springholds. Nesta B's moving in. Demu not looking. Big hit. And the Berserk gets activated. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> of course, the bait strelts you to attack you. Slow down the reinforcements as, as intended, as planned. <laughs> oh, bless him. Wow. It does actually get in the breathing room. He's cleared up the rams. He's pushed Dimu back, at least temporarily. Now, long term gold access, how are we looking here? Because I think Dimu, he's got about, what, 9k gold to work with, and that's without. Equating the four relics, the high trade house gold, um, the caverns as well. He's got plenty of gold. He's not going to run out. So Wham needs another way of winning this. And I think it is going to be trade, isn't it? Yep. He's now transitioning. So this is realistically as weak as Wham should get. If he can survive this, the Varangian spam is going to be unhinged. Strauss account is kind of getting dented though. Only 27 on the front side. He's been reduced to 40 overall. He was up at 60 before. Nesta B is still getting some decent hits out occasionally. I don't know. I kind of like Wham's position in this game now. I just love how the Javelins are the MVP here. They're the ones killing the Streltsy. Everything else is cannon fodder. I do feel like, in a way, Wham is going the hard way about this. Oh my god! If he gets a reload... I mean, he could turn and shoot again. It would be worth it for the Streltsy. I think he's a little bit hesitant, though. Despite that damage, Dumu going in with the headbutt for a critical hit. Ram's now moving in onto the TC. That's not too big of a concern. The big concern is going to be the fact that trade is about to be exposed. Wham is indeed trading, and Dumu now knows. Now sniping out the traders. I think this game is now at a loss for Wham. And you know the crazy part to me is like Limitane. If he just had Limitane here, I feel like that's a more cost-efficient and sustainable front line. And food is the thing he has plenty of. Gold is the thing he's been struggling on. I think this Varangian may have just drained him. Streltsy, 20 of them still. Rams continue to shuffle on through, and I, I think we're reaching break point in this game. Nestabees are trying, but sadly too often dying. Vrangin are at least going to get a backstab, so maybe there's hope for the Nestabees, but I just I feel like with Berserk being used to get around the back here, it's not going to be enough. Demu now surging ahead, man. I, I think, wow, the in hindsight type realization is going to be that Vrangin was a bit of a bait here. They looked so good when he was raiding, but when the script changed, it was no longer about raiding. It was about taking on the Streltsy. He was really missing that cost-efficient frontliner. Berserk. I'm not going to be activated again just to try and close this out, push this back. But the issue for me now is you're down to 21 military. You couldn't buy another Varangian if you wanted to. Your income is just abysmal. This, I think, is a lesson on why relying too heavily on Varangians can lose you games. Limitane would have felt better. I was really hoping for a Limitane transition. I like Wham's position. Yeah, I did like Wham's position. When it was here and I couldn't see what was happening back here. And when I saw this and I couldn't see everything else. <laughs> I liked Wham's position when he was raiding. But when it got forced into this focused fight, things have gotten more and more ugly. 
Spearman are the strongest unit in the game. Well, yeah, that's kind of easy to say with the Limitane. You know, like, these guys literally run into battle with a shield super glued to their head. They're ridiculous. Sorry, I say these guys as if they exist. If they did, then GG you win. Is Limitane damage reduction usable against Strelzy? Yes. Because what happens is when you shield wall, the way calculations are done is you remove 30% of 42. So that you've already removed 12.6 um, damage. And then you apply the ranged armor reduction, which would be minus three in this situation. So, or with the Camelora 5, right? So at that point, you're reducing Strelzy damage by 18. It's almost half the damage gone. That's a lot. And Limitane are very tanky. They have 10 more health by default. Elite Army Tactics is more scalable. It's very strong. Vrangin, by comparison, I mean, the, like, you've got this armor. So your, you, your debate is, do you reduce damage you take by 8? Or do you reduce it by 18? That's a no-brainer, right? Yes, you have more health on Vrangin compared to the Limitane, but it's moot compared to the damage reduction overall. So you're pretty much just paying less to get the same level of tankiness. The only difference is, obviously, Vrangin can't... Like, you know, they can take out Siege. Limitane can't. But the problem that you're seeing here is, because there's so many Streltsy, you're never reaching the Siege. What you needed was Javelins. Maybe you can still play Nesta Bees, but ultimately you need the Limitane. And fun little fact for you guys, uh, Limitane, with Shield Wall down, they charge quick enough to actually get close spring ons. Not versus melee? Right, so if you're going to sit here and tell me the issue with, with this game is that you can't break Dimu's melee, I'm going to have big question marks. I agree. Bardish is very strong. 62 damage in melee. But let's be real here. Like, there was no melee to fight. It was like a handful of spears. It's a Ramaphon, guys. Dimu. <laughs> 13 Rams with Wandering Counts. I think we're about to see the end of Wham. Oh, you mean in general? Sure, but like the whole logic with Limitane is, you, like, once again, you don't have to choose the fight. Or rather, you don't have to, to commit to the fight. You choose the fight because you have so much movement speed. Limitane are actually still broken, and the reason isn't even Shield Wall. It was the movement speed. 1.44 base default movement speed is insane, right? Think how broken we often think Palace Guard are. Limitane aren't that much worse off than Palace Guard from a like killing unarmed unit's perspective or choosing where you fight. I think the problem is that right now, Varangian are MVP in Castle H. I think people hold on to the idea of Varangian Imperial for a little bit too long. Varangian are not your SD unit in Imperial. Especially if you don't have unlimited gold trickle, which is hard to get into. It's Limitane. What I like Varangian for, they're a hybridized unit. They're a good front line, they're good at taking out Siege, and they're good at raiding Eco. But when you're this deep into the game, and it's turning into like this fight against Masterelzi. You know, they, they won't be able to deliver you to victory. Not unless you've already got 40 traders. Wow, I think he's just breaking through. Is he is he actually gonna go for the landmark snipe? Oh my god, please say so. Well trader's been shut down, so you're not getting more Vrangian. So somehow these guys have to do enough work. No, this is just eco kill, right? There's no way you end the game off this. And the problem is, now look at what Dimu says. Okay, if, if you want to do that, I'm just going to go in. I've got Bombards, I've got Rams. I can guard this. I know you have no gold. So Dumi has the right call here. He's not overreacting. He's like, okay, I can afford to lose 20, 30 eco. I don't care. Because at this stage, double keep will protect what's most important. And by the way, that is bonkers. <laughs> double keep plus the Kremlin. Just to guarantee not enough damage is done. On the other side of this, with the Bombards now here, if you start breaking these systems, everything falls apart. Well played, Mr. Ben. His own trade is at least being hit, but I just don't think he cares at this stage. His passive gold income far exceeds the Byzantines. And wait, 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 wait. Hold on! Clever girl. He's evolving. He's learning. However, he now needs to get either Nesta Bees or Javelins as a backline. The Limitane cannot win on their own. They are your tank. You're in a World of Warcraft MMO experience right now. Someone tanks, someone kills. So for now, it's going to be Vrangian. Nestemi's coming to assist, but 
All of a sudden, Dumu about to lose a lot of strokes here. A critical point in the game where the gold is beginning to dry up. Oh my god, dude. Wow. Are you from another planet? I mean, don't get me wrong, guys. This is still an uphill battle. But Wham, in the last two minutes, or well, minute and a half, has made all the correct moves. He ran to raid the eco. He's shutting down the trade. He's still over here with the Rangi, and he's spread out across the map, right? He knows he can't fight Streltsy directly. And then he repels it with Limitane. Now, this is still far from a win, but this is step one on the route to recovery. Even the Limitane, like we said, they can choose where they fight. Similar effect of Rangi. Smart identification by Wham. And the cool thing, right, is your economy has been shrunk, but now all of it remains in the corner further away. The only thing that can be kind of harassed is trade. Everything else is far, far away from Dumu right now. Not that many Strolts in the front line now. It's got to be said, I, th I think Dumu... If he can't stabilize his Strolts, he can't. He's going to be reduced to Spearman. You can't even play Horseman, right? Because it's unlimited. I love how scrappy this game has become. So the ranking rates have been cleared up. They're not coming anymore. Wood is going to become a problem now for Wham. It's got to be highlighted. He's got a wood cluster over here. This one's already being exhausted. And nope, he just doesn't think he's got anything left in it. GG gets called. So he realizes in the attritional war, there's simply not enough access left. You got to ask the question, had he gone to those Limitane just a few minutes earlier, could this game have looked so much different? Can't take anything away from Dimmu, though. Great read on his timing. Masses into Streltsy and goes to that push in when it matters most. But as we said, this matchup, you don't want to play late game Imperial against the Roos. Not unless you've got an insane upside. And Wab was never able to get that. Benny Boy, just too good on his Roos.